Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's build is going to be a little bit different. First of all, I'm going to be in front of the camera a lot on this one. Um, this is nothing hobby related, RC related, conversion. I guess that's wrong. It is conversion. Uh, today we're building an accessible golf cart. Uh, this is not a handicapped golf cart because the person I'm building this for is no way handicapped. Uh, she is, does have the use of her legs. She is wheelchair bound, but she is in no way handicapped. Uh, my nickname for this girl is Beast Mode because all the time I see her and what she's doing, uh, nothing stops her. Uh, I'm pretty active at a church camp called the Art Christian Ministries in Converse, Indiana. So if you want to check it out, let's see, uh, I'll put a link to it right up here if you want to kind of go check them out what they do. Uh, I volunteer my time there. I'm a camp dean. I'm on the board of directors. Um, and so we have a need. This one girl is working for us full time. And she's tearing up her electric wheelchair a lot going through the river in the woods and not through the river, over the river, through the woods uh, at this campground. Um, it is a Christian campground for all ages. We do summer retreats, winter retreats, as well as uh, summertime camping from kindergarten through high school age. And we're tearing up our wheelchair out here going through the woods and all that. So a couple years ago, a company loaned us a wheelchair, a golf cart that you could, has a ramp and drive a wheelchair up on, but they wanted 20 grand for it. And I was like, Ooh, that's a little, that's a little uh, steep. So, um, we didn't have 20 grand sitting around to buy it. So I told the executive director, Hey, let's find a golf cart. I can build one of these things. So that's what we're going to do today. This is going to probably be about a three part build. I am definitely, definitely not getting it done in one. I'm going to go and post part one before it's done so that you guys can stay on me to get this done. I've been trying to uh, accomplish this project for almost two years now, um, and I'm not getting it done. So I've got to push myself and get this done before uh, camp season this summer because every day that she's without it, it's more wear and tear on her uh, electric wheelchair that was made for indoors and on sidewalks and not going through grass fields, through woods, through water, through mud puddles, through gravel lots, all, all the above. So let me kind of give you an overview of what we're doing and you can see how the project takes shape. Takes shape. So here is our donor golf cart. Um, when this all started, I told the executive director, hey, I've got a golf cart. Uh, this buddy of mine owes me one. We did some trade on stuff. And I never got it. I actually paid him to rebuild the engine. He owed me the golf cart as it was, and I never got it. So I had to go out on, a, went out on Facebook and found another one. This is a two-cylinder gas engine golf cart. So I wanted to stick with gas so that we knew we'd always have the power. Um, we're going to take this thing and chop it right through there, extend it about 40 inches, put a ramp on the passenger side that'll come down, and then we got to change the... Uh, gas pedals and the brake leakage to make it a hand control. I'll kind of show you what I'm doing there. The idea is that you're going to push the lever forward and it's going to push the gas. You bring it back to neutral, it turns uh, the fuel off, you pull it backwards and that'll apply the brake. So it's going to be a one single handed control. I will need to relocate the choke wire, the electrical plug for the ignition up front. I'm probably going to leave the Ford reverse lever right back there. Um, like I said, beast mode, she can, uh, she can handle getting that. Um, and so I actually will be adding up in this uh, front corner up here a hydraulic power unit, a separate 12-volt battery, and that's where the electrical controls and all that will go. And then we're going to get a, a longer top for this because, like I said, we are extending this. Uh, we'll put um, some solar panels on top to help power the battery up and to help keep both batteries, the, the OEM battery and that battery maintained so it's always at a full charge. And then we got to deck this out with some light bars. So... Uh, we'll get cutting on here. The plan for today is get all the pieces cut, get all the, the platform and the ramp welded together, get this thing cut in half and get it extended and getting this main thing mocked up. Um, as of right now, I've got no major plans for the suspension, but that will most likely change. Uh, once I get this extra weight on there, I may have to put some stiffer shocks uh, or maybe some springs in the front and rear axle. And I haven't done it yet. But this axle is a little uh, wonky, to say the least. I might need to go order a new axle and throw a new axle onto the front. But for right now, I'm trying to get this done kind of as quick as possible. Um, it's not going to have all the detail finishing touches of a new paint job. I'm going to try to clean this up as best as I can. Um, might have to rattle can, spray bomb it. Um, I don't have all the funds in the world to just completely deck this out. If we did, we'd have just bought that $20,000 one. So... Um, between myself and our business, 
uh, we're donating this whole thing to the camp. So we bought the golf cart, we bought all, well, and we bought the light bars, the hydraulic power units, the hydraulic cylinder, and we're putting this all together so that our girl can have a good way of getting around uh, the campground without tearing up her, uh, her electric cart that she needs for a daily basis for going to and from uh, offices, her house, and all that type of stuff. So let's uh, get some power tools out and we'll get cracking. So here's all the parts for the main platform and the ramp that are plasma, the brackets were plasma cut out. All the square tubing was, rectangle tubing was cut on the bandsaw. And now it's time to weld it together. So let's use that YouTube magic. Wait, didn't work. Do you have to say something like uh, abracadabra or something? Oh well, I guess I'll just weld it up like normal. So before I can start cutting this, I do need to disconnect the brake and the throttle linkage and get those rods out of there so that when I make the cuts along the back, I won't be uh, damaging that because I will end up using this existing brake and throttle linkage. Um, I'll probably make my cut about an inch and a half to two inches out a little bit so those, I'll have room for the take holes for the old linkages to go through the new frame and continue on. So I'm going to disassemble this and then get this cut. So I got the uh, front of the golf cart set on a set of forks on the forklift. And I have the, uh, the base that I made, the extension, on the forklift. And each joint, I got some clamps, kind of clamping it down to get them basically flush with one another. And you see I have a basically long aluminum straight edge that I'm standing up vertically to make sure we're basically straight all the way across. We don't want to have this thing have a big hump in it. So it's pretty close. I used this jack on the back side to kind of lift one end up to kind of square it up some. It's really close. What I'm going to do now is going to go and put some tacks on it. Uh, not fully welded, but just kind of get it tacked so it can hold itself up without the clamps. I'll remove all the clamps and then check how straight it is. And if I have to bend it or tweak it, I can do that and uh, uh, weld it up some more then. So uh, we'll go and get some tacks on here and we'll go from there.
I've got the new base tacked to the front end. I've got this basically leveled up and where I want it here on the back end. I'm going to go ahead and tack this together to the back, remove all my blocks, all my jacks, and see if she holds. Uh, once I'm happy with that, then actually I'll, I'll weld it up more fully. I'll actually stand this thing vertically, make sure I get some good welds on the bottom side, and then I'm actually going to run a piece of uh, quarter inch steel vertically uh, between this joint from the new part to the center section and from the center section to the old part to help strengthen that so this doesn't want to break uh, coming down. So let's get welding and go from there. So as you can see, there's still a decent amount of flex in there, which it's more than tack welded, but it's not fully welded yet. Um, but the vertical pieces underneath these joints will greatly strengthen that want to want to bounce and stress down. But overall, for getting tacked in the kind of first day of putting this together, pretty happy with where we're at. So uh, I'll go ahead and put the uh, ramp on, so you can kind of see how that's going to work, and we'll probably call it a day for this first video. So here it is with the ramp on it. The hydraulic cylinder mount will mount right down there in the back and it'll pick up on the front of the ramp here. We'll raise it up and come up straight to 90 degrees. I do have some sheet metal cut that will be the transition from this gap to the ground level. So it'll have a real smooth transmission coming up. And then the hydraulic power unit will sit right up here in this front corner. Just give it a wheel up, come down. And this is kind of what I have for the linkage that as I push this forward, this lever will pull this lever up. This one within may have the ability to just float free. This will pull up, turn a uh, uh, like a bell crank, and pull on the throttle. And then as you come down, it'll let it release. And then as you pull back, this lever will pull the brake back, and the throttle will be able to free spling here. And pulling the brake again with a couple bell cranks to lift up and then turn it to pull this up. The only thing I don't have right now is that lock to lock it in the parking brake. So I'll most likely have like a little clip or some type of lock that as I pull this back, I can lock this handle back and then when you grab it to release the handle. So um, again, for day one, I'm pretty happy with the way all this turned out. And on lookout for build number two.